So good morning, Gaines Farm. Thank you for coming on so promptly. Um, if you can hear me and see my screen, which says, if you were an engineer, what would you do? Could you use the chat facility to let me know, please? If you um, put your cursor towards the bottom of the screen, you will see a little chat icon, well, the menu bar will pop up, and you'll see a little chat icon. And, oh, what's happened there? Something's happened to my share screen there, so bear with me a second, please. So sorry, yeah, if you put your cursor to the bottom of the screen, you'll see a little chat icon and you just type in there, hi, that you can hear me and see me and see my screen. It'll be good. I've just sent a message. So you should see a little flash somewhere. Good morning, Bill Key. If you can hear me and see my screen, could you use the chat facility to let me know, please? If you put your cursor towards the bottom of the screen, a little menu bar will pop up and you will see um, the chat icon. Click on that and then just type in the box that you can hear me and see the screen and say hi, of course. Hi, Year 4. Good to have you aboard. Bill Key, if you can hear us. Oh, sorry. You can. Eden's Farm. If you can hear me, could you let me know by the chat facility, please?
Good morning, the Shade Primary School. You can hear me and see my screen. Could you use the chat to just let me know, please? Oh, you have done already. Good morning. Um, can you hear, obviously you can hear me. Uh, can you see my screen as well? That's all you need to be able to see at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Stoker. So Ings Farm, if you can hear me and see the screen, could you let me know, please, via the chat facility? Again, if you put your cursor towards the bottom of the screen, a little menu bar will pop up and you'll see the chat icon click on that and then type in the box that you can hear me and see my screen please Hi, Jamie, how are you? I'll just unmute you there. Hi, Jamie, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, yeah. So, sorry it took so long for whatever reason. I couldn't get it on. I was, I was panicking myself going, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, don't worry. Um, we've got a couple more, well, a few more schools we're waiting for. So we just bear with us. Yeah. No we'll, soon be, we'll soon get going. Ings Farm, if you can hear me, could you use the chat facility to let me know, please? Good morning, my name's Michaela and I work as a primary engineer. I'm just calling on behalf of Tatchy as one of their members of staff wanted to call you with regards to the mobile STEM CPE courses. Um, have you got the head teacher available at all STEM? Higgins Farm, if you can hear me, could you use the chat facility to let me know, please? If you put your cursor towards the bottom of the screen, you will see a little um, menu bar pop up. And then press on the chat icon and let me know um, that you can both hear me and the knocking behind me um, and my screen, which says, if you were an engineer, what would you do? I apologize for the... There's some carpet being laid next door and it's a bit loud.
Hi, Ings Park. Yeah. Oh, wasn't that your class in GIT? Yeah. Ings Farm, sorry. Um, I've had to mute you, I'm afraid, because it, it gets quite loud when, when um, there's lots of people talking. Um, you can hear, obviously hear my voice and see my screen, yeah? Well, we just, I've just heard by email that uh, one of the schools had a number of um, classes um, booked. They can't get access, they're having difficulty with um, the link and another it seems here. Oh, shame. Okay, so um, I think we ought to get started um, because those two schools, I think, are just another school we were waiting for. But not not every school actually um, joins in straight away. Um, so I'm going to close down my screen and then I'm going to give you a little um, introduction. Um, so good morning, everybody, and um, welcome to the um, this our, our live online engineer event. And as I, as I call them, I am an engineer. This is what I do. Um, and today we've got a senior asset engineer, Jamie Crooks, who's going to speak to us. Um, but before Jamie starts, I'll, I'll just tell you what's going to happen over the next hour. Um, First of all, should, we, we keep everybody muted, um, except Jamie, um, because it, it gets quite distracting and loud when um, there's different people. We, we, we have, I think, I don't know, we, we, have, we have at least a couple of hundred people on, on, on the um, event today. So everybody's keeping muted. Um, and the first 15 minutes of the presentation, uh, the, the event will be Jamie giving his presentation. Um, and then uh, the, the remaining three quarters of an hour we spend on the Q&A session, where we ask you teachers to type in your pupils' questions into the chat facility. And then Jamie will read them out um, and give his answers. Um, we're booked to 11.30. Um, and so, Hopefully we'll get all the answers, uh, questions, uh, all the questions answered by then. Um, and after the event, please feel free to uh, send any um, feedback you, you, you'd like to us and um, I'll pass it on to Jamie. So without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Jamie Crooks now, who, uh, as I mentioned, is a senior assets manager at Network Rail. So I just unmute you, Jamie, and it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, morning everyone, uh, as Chris has already mentioned, um, my name's Jamie Crooks, I, I'm going to do a, um, a quick presentation on, on, on what I do, I suppose, and, and uh, what Network Braille does. Uh, I'm just going to bring up this uh, presentation now. Sorry. So, uh, as I said, my, my name is Jamie Crooks. I, I work for Network Rail. Uh, my, my current role is uh, Senior Asset Engineer uh, at Support. Uh, I'll go a bit further uh, through my job as we go through the presentation. So, this is all about uh, my engineering journey and how I became an engineer. So, I suppose the, the, the starting point is, is what I did in, in school. Obviously, I've, I've followed pretty much the same process as what many children 
uh, follow today, uh, with probably the only strange exception as uh, going to middle school, which uh, obviously no longer exists. Um, so by the time I got to secondary school, I, I did my um, GCSEs. Unfortunately, I only ever passed one of my uh, GCSEs, uh, and and uh, and that was in history, so not very relevant to to engineering. Uh, and then when I left secondary school, I, I as you can see, there's sort of a gap between myself uh, going from secondary school to, into Doncaster College before I actually did any of my engineering stuff. Uh, and and in that time, I, I did bits and bobs and odd jobs, and, and obviously found that I wanted to do more. Uh, and, and learn more. So I, I went back to college to uh, give myself a, a, a bit of further education. Uh, and in Doncaster College, I did my uh, first diploma in, 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 in uh, operations and maintenance engineering. Um, so when I actually first uh, went to do engineering, I, I wasn't wholly sure what it was. It was something that my um, friends suggested that I, that I actually uh, should do uh, and he thought I'd enjoy it um, so yeah I mean I, I, engineering uh, covers a uh, very vast amount of subjects so when people say they're engineers that there's various types of people doing various types of, of engineering so once I completed my first diploma um, I, I was quite lucky I, I ended up doing a, a modern apprenticeship off the back of that uh, and for, from my uh, modern apprenticeship I, I actually gained my uh, BTEC Level 3 National Certificate in Mechanical Engineering and I did quite well in that. Uh, I got a double distinction and also I achieved the uh, official uh, advanced modern apprenticeship in, in, in engineering, specifically in tool making. So tool making is it's not as what it suggests, it isn't making hammers and spammers and, and, and wrenches, it, it's actually um, injection molding tools so stuff that makes plastics so we could have made tools for anything from toys to car parts so once i finished my modern apprenticeship i, I was told that i was no longer allowed any further education so i decided i still wanted to carry on and get my degree and uh, quite luckily uh, when i was in college I got to know someone that was working in Network Rail currently, and uh, he suggested that I should join Network Rail and, and try getting onto the foundation degree in, in railway engineering. Uh, and, and luckily, I, I went on a day and I, I was taken on uh, from from with Network Rail. So I spent roughly um, two year two years or so uh, doing my foundation degree. And then I spent another two years when I was actually in Network Rail getting my bachelor's degree in railway engineering. Um, and I, I did quite well in both, both of those. Uh, and I specialised in, in electrical and power engineering for, for Network Rail. So sort of a brief expl explanation as to why I like engineering. So engineering engineering is uh, really good for me. I, I, I enjoy problem solving. I like trying to um, solve the issues that, that we come across uh, in Network Rail and, and sort of come across um, in, in everyday life. Uh, every day is a challenge and every day is different. So it, it's not always straightforward. It's, it's sometimes very difficult to, to overcome the challenges that we, that we come across. But uh, Network Rail and, and my degree have given me tools to, to overcome that and, and to be able to challenge myself uh, and solve the issues. Uh, as, as I said, every day is different for myself, um, especially in the role that I do currently. Um, there's different issues and challenges throughout the railway. So just a quick, uh, especially uh, coming from railway, uh, some of the amazing engineering achievements that, that sort of happened. So uh, initially going back in history, especially for the railway, the first first sort of uh, railway in a sense was pull, was horses and carts effectively uh, pulling stuff and that then uh, as time went on, we uh, we went and, and as you can see in the past, we sort of had the steam trains that obviously you still see uh, today. You can go to uh, York Railway Museum and, and see all the steam trains there. 
um, going on to sort of the present stuff uh, in, in the middle. That's a class 91 locomotive uh, pulling Mark III carriages. Uh, so that's the sort of stuff you may see on our on, on our network today, especially on the, the route that I work on. Um, is is obviously quite a, a modernish train. And then in the future, who knows? Who knows what the, what the railway will look like? It, it could possibly be uh, maglev trains, so magnetic lev levitating trains, or it could be some other form of transport. So, as well as, as well as that, I, I just thought I'd mention uh, sort of engineering in everyday life. So obviously, uh, engineering is everywhere you look uh, today in this modern society. So we've just got some some pictures of some sort of stuff. So some of the stuff that engineers will have been involved in. So we've got we've got TVs and various electronic devices there. We've got mobile phones, tablets, uh, computers, computer games. So they all require electronic engineers to, to review them, to get them to work. Uh, in the middle, we've got a, a funny looking building, which is the Guggenheim. Uh, again, that, that required an architect, but for that architect to make his dreams come true, required a civil engineer to, to make those structures safe, to be able to people, for, for people to be able to use. Uh, in the bottom corner, we, we've got some medicines, and obviously medicines help us get better. Uh, and the thing for that is, you've got to remember that that required a, a chemical engineer to, to put those uh, medicines together to make them stable, to make them safe for us to consume. Uh, and then obviously we've got other various forms of transport. So you've got so you've got aeroplanes, uh, and you've got cars. So you, you'll have automotive engineers, uh, and, and you'll have. Um, aeronautical engineers that, that all work on these types of things. So everywhere you look, engineering is, is, is involved. So I'm just gonna now go into um, sort of network rail and, and who we are and, and what we do. So we are network rail, we, we own and operate the infrastructure. So we own all the, the railway lines basically uh, and, and anything required to make a train run. The only thing we don't own are the trains themselves. Uh, the trains themselves are owned by someone called the TOC, which is a train operating company. Now, they're the, they're the ones that obviously you, you catch, so they're the type of trains you catch. So, Network Rail is currently broken into, um, into regions and routes. Uh, uh, I work on the eastern region, uh, which is obviously shown on, on that large map there. Uh, and the, the other regions that we have in Network Rail are, are Scotland, uh, Southern, North, West and Central and, and Wales and Western. And obviously on the, on the larger map uh, you can see uh, all those regions uh, are broken down so you can sort of, they're, they're colorized effectively. So um, prior to the the breakdown uh, uh, into regions. Um, I worked for a route called uh, L and E, which is, which was London North Eastern. Now they've um, broken this bit down a bit more. I work, officially work across two routes, which is East Coast Main Line and, and North East. So um, my route covers from King's London King's Cross in the south um, to the Scottish borders in the north, and then um, uh, sort of near to Manchester it, it, um, in the uh, west and, and, and in the east um, across the hull effectively. So um, just a, a, a quick one about my career in, in Network Rail. As I said, I, I joined under the um, foundation degree um, that I did at, at Sheffield Hallam. Um, so in that, I I did various placements um, um, across across the company um, whilst in summer. So uh, every five months, we we had a block where I would spend five months in in network rail, doing various stuff, going to ver different various uh, um, engineering departments uh, to have a look basically uh, at what network rail did and and to to think about what I would like to do in my future career as an engineer in network realm. Um, so I, I, I did that for a bit and, and start looking for roles uh, and 
uh, luckily, I got offered um, a quite interesting role in in London. So, um, as, as you can see, my my second placement, uh, uh, I, I worked out of London, uh, Houston in, in London as a, an assistant design engineer. Um, so, as a as a as a design engineer, my my specific role was um, attraction power design engineer. So, what what that means is that I I designs the power supplies required for the electric trains to run. So I, I don't know how much you know about railways, but we, we have a, a system called the overhead line system, uh, and that runs at 25,000 volts, so that's very high voltage. Uh, and my role as, as an assistant design engineer and, and as a design engineer, which, which was the third uh, placement, was to look at um, the required voltage for those trains to run uh, and that's what I spent um, a good five years um, doing uh, uh, for Network Rail um, and I worked for um, what they called the National Specialist Team so my role uh, in that team was basically anywhere and everywhere in the country so the, the, the work that I was doing could be in Scotland, it could be in Wales it could have been somewhere down south. Uh, so yeah, various things in that. And then um, sort of uh, a few years ago, I, I decided I wanted to move um, back to where I came from, um, back in, in, in Doncaster. Um, so I, I took a, a, my a role in, in York uh, uh, as an asset engineer. Uh, and again, I've since moved on there since being promoted in that team to a senior asset engineer. So uh, I, I'm going to talk a bit more about my current roles on the, on the next slide. So um, so this is sort of what I do in, in Network Rail. So I, my role is I own all the plant assets uh, that, that Network Rail work on. Um, so Probably the first thing is, is, is what is a, a plant asset. So plants, for, for me, in, in my world, refers to uh, pumps, generators, low voltage power, high voltage power, but not including traction power, so not including the, 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 the 25,000 volt overhead line system. Uh, I will look, up, look after stuff up to uh, 11,000 volts uh, and lighting. So as, as part of my role is that I own those assets officially and, and we have uh, various maintenance teams that will go out and, and look after uh, those assets. Uh, and part of my job is to make sure that, that when the maintenance team go out, that they are looking after my assets correctly. So I will do something called assurance and compliance with, with um basically a, a set of standards uh, that, that network rail have uh, uh, to maintain uh, this, this this equipment so I mean <laughs> that that's a, the basic premise of, of my job without going into massive amounts of, of, of detail so what what am I um, sort of looking to do in in, in the future uh, um, so uh, we will look at uh, providing more intelligent infrastructure. Now, what I mean by that is we will look at uh, um, we will look at um, providing um, stuff that can monitor monitor the the equipment that we have to ensure that it is being maintained correctly, that it is working correctly. Uh, if it stops. Or breaks down, then, then the uh, infrastructure will, will um, tell us basically that it's broken and it needs someone to come and fix it. So we, we look at doing more of that. We, we've currently got some on, some on network rail, but not vast amounts of, of, of stuff uh, out there. So we're going to look at doing more of that. Uh, improving electrical safety. So um, one of the big things in, in network rail is obviously the safety of our staff and the safety of passengers. So we will we we're going to strive to to uh, make our electrical safety um, 
uh, far better because we're still having lots of incidents where where we're giving people um, electric shocks that we shouldn't be. Uh, uh, we're installing incorrect um, electrical equipment. Uh, things are getting old uh, and um, needs uh, fixing and replacing quicker. So we will look at um, doing all that sort of stuff going into the future. Uh, and the final thing is is helping build more electrification. So although I don't own the the um, the, the overhead line equipment. Um, a lot of plant assets have interfaces with with um, this uh, electrical equipment, so it will require further input from myself and members of my team to to ensure that um, that we can build this stuff, build it quickly, build it safely, build it compliantly, uh, uh, and ensuring that um, it, it's it's good for the future. Um, so yeah. Uh, and then, finally, I suppose the question is to, to all, all you guys out there, if, if you were an engineer, what would you do? Um, now, there is a video on the bottom of this. I don't intend to play it, but what, what I implore all, all the schools to do is go to um, Network Rail's website, because on Network Rail's website, there is um, a specifically uh, page set up for schools where, where you can actually go watch this at your own leisure. Uh, and there's some other stuff um, about STEM activities, uh, etc. To go go and have a look, uh, and and obviously being being part of this, uh, um, people can come to schools and, and and give you further talks, which I, I'm sure Chris can can give any updates uh, as and required. So um, that's the end of my uh, presentation. So thank you all for listening. Uh, and is there any questions? Brilliant, thanks mate. Um, so everybody, um, if any of you pupils have any questions, please could you type them into the, the chat facility and Jamie will um, answer them. Um, there's normally um, a lot here, Jamie, uh, where, where people are asking the questions and please see if they can start um, typing them in. Do you mind yeah. if you're um, share your screen now. Yeah. See, yeah, that's better. Just uh, your desktop there. Wow. Lots of stuff on there. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the first question is through, I think. Uh, yeah, so we've, we've got the first one from, from Ings Farm. So it, the question is, how old do you have to be an apprentice? Um, so I believe now, I don't get, so I did mine when I was quite old, but I believe the youngest you can be now is 16. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. But if you um, if you do go, if you do, if the school does have chance, you can go onto the um, government website, and I think it'll probably give you more information on, on, on modern apprentices. Um, but obviously, um, it's quite a big thing now. It's being pushed by by a lot of people, uh, apprenticeships, and, and like I say. It, it, it gave me a, a, a good standing um, start with, with engineering. And so, yeah, it, it's definitely um, something to look at uh, if you want to, if you don't necessarily want to go to university. So the, the next one is, um, how many hours do you work in a day, week? Do you enjoy it? Um, so my standards hours, Per week it is is 35 hours. That's that's my contracted hours. So that equates to seven hours a day, roughly uh, eight hours including lunch. Uh, uh, so yeah, that, that's pretty standard ish standard ish hours. I'd probably say it's a bit less. So when I when I was a modern apprentice, I think my working hours were 37 and a half hours a week. So yeah, I've, I've slightly less at network role. Uh, and do I enjoy it? Yes, uh, I enjoy every day. Like I say, every day is challenging, but um, I, I, I sort of, um, yeah, I, I don't have a day where I, I don't get up and think, oh, oh no, I've got to go to work today. I, I do enjoy going to work. I, I think it's really good. So the, the next one is from uh, Shade Primary School. Jamie, if you're in our position, what would you invent? Something electrical. Good question. Um, I, I've, I've, so, 
I've never sat down and thought about uh, uh, electrical stuff. Um, so <laughs> we obviously all use. Um, so the, the whole point of an invention is, is to make someone's life life easier. So um, thinking of, of one strap for top of my head is it, obviously um, a vacuum cleaner. Obviously, I haven't invented that, but obviously, I, I'm just trying to give you ideas of, of what you would going forward. So, the, the vacuum cleaner obviously did improve people's lives, um, allowing people to collect dust quicker than it than it ever had been previously. Uh, um, um, so, if, if I, I haven't got anything specific uh, that's coming out out of my mind at this point, um, um, so yeah. Um, Good luck with with inventing something. Um, you, you never know. You could be the, the next James Dyson and, and invent the next generation of, of vacuum cleaners. Sorry, I couldn't be any any more uh, helpful with that. So the next one is from uh, Bill Qu uh, Keys Primary. Um, why did you want to be an engineer? Uh, and there's a bit of a follow on from that. Uh, there are lots of different engineering jobs. Why, why did you pick Network Rail and what's your favourite type of engineer? So, um, yeah, as I said, when I, when I first got told um, by my friends, um, why don't you come and be an engineer? I, I, I didn't have a clue what an engineer was. was. Um, it, it, it was a word that I had loosely heard previously but didn't know what it entailed so um I, I guess becoming becoming an going into into the education and, and and sort of seeing seeing what they did in engineering just sort of fell into my personality um as a, as, as a child I, I was always quite interested in, in understanding how things worked and I enjoyed taking things to bits and putting them back back together so I don't think it was an aspiration as a child but that's probably because it wasn't promoted as much as as, as, as a career at, at my younger age uh, which is why it's really good that they're doing all this this stem stuff now because obviously it, it's providing um, real world engineers to come and talk about their career and what they're doing why they enjoy it so the next part of that question is that there's lots of different engineering jobs. Uh, why, why did you pick Network Rail? Um, so, uh, yeah, I sort of fell into Network Rail rather than, than being picked for it. But when I, when I joined Network Rail, I, I, I realised straight away that, that it was something I wanted to do and I could see it being a long-term uh, goal uh, to stay long-term job sorry um to stay there uh so yeah i mean that sort of that's why i've been in the network rail i'm coming up to 10 years of, of service in network rail now and i don't see myself leaving for another 10 years um so yeah um, and, and then the last part of that question is what's your favorite type of engineer well i'd have to say electrical engineer because that's exactly what i am um but obviously i, I did uh, previously in, in in, in my education, I did mechanical engineering as well. So I, I've got a, um, a joy for both electrical and, and mechanical engineering. I, I mean, mechanical engineering wise at home, I'm quite hands on. I do DIY, I, I will make various stuff. I do uh, woodwork, I do metal work. So yeah, mechanical engineering is still a big part of my life as well. So the, the next one is from uh, Shade Primary School. When you're faced with a problem, how do you go about solving it? So, so there's various methods and ways of, of problem solving. So the, the first, one of the first ones is, have you ever solved this in the past? Or has someone else close to you solved this in the past? Now, in, in Network Crowd, the company is, is, is fast. We're talking th plus 30,000 people. So at some point, someone will have faced the same issue as yourself. So if you're not 100% sure um, yourself, you can always go ask for advice. So I w I've always found in Network Rail, well, there's, there's always a good motto and, and ethos in, in Network Rail, well, which is 
no question is a stupid question, which I, I wholeheartedly take on, uh, especially when we, when we get graduates and stuff like that. We, we, they they sort of feel out of place and a bit worried about asking questions. But yeah, by all means, first ask um, um, people if they they know the issue, and, and then and then some of it I suppose is solving pro, solving problems, depending on what it is your your education. What you've been provided with educationally wise will, will help you um, um, do that. So obviously, if, it, if it's a specific electrical problem, that then then edu education and, and courses that you've done will will help you solve that problem effectively. So uh, next one is from Ings Farm. Is it difficult to get the rail line running? Yes. <laughs> um, depending on on, on the, the type of failure. Um, yes, it, it becomes very difficult and very expensive. Um, so the, the major ones that we have to deal with is, is um, what we call dewirements of, of the overhead line. Now, what, what that actually means is that the, the train or some other thing has pulled the overhead lines down, which, which require these to be um, put back up. So that can take a lot of time and, and require a lot of manpower, a lot of machinery to put these things back together. Or, or I mean, they're, they're some of the more complex ones. Um, so we had a failure last week where uh, we had um, what we call over-voltage over happen, uh, which blew a lot of um, electronic um, signaling equipment. So the signals control the trains and tell it when, where to stop and, and when to go. Um, so they that took uh, nearly the whole weekend to resolve that issue. So I, as you can imagine, it takes a lot of time, effort and, and money to, to get it running again. But when it's running, it's normally quite, it normally works quite well. So from uh, next one's from uh, Bill Keys Primary. How long has Network Rail run for? What's the worst mistake you've made at work? Uh, and do engineer, <laughs> engineers make mistakes? So Network Rail, uh, I believe, was around 2000. It, it, so um, a bit of potted history around the rail networks. We started off as British Rail, which was called BR. Uh, then it got privatised uh, uh, and various companies did bits and bobs. BR was still about. Uh, uh, and then we had uh, uh, Jarvis and then we had Rail Track, uh, And then finally we evolved it into Network Rail. So Network Rail sort of being that We've been known for about um, 20 odd years nearly now. So, yeah. Uh, what's the worst mistake you have made? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't really know. I, might, I probably make lots of little mistakes all the time. Um, my, my job is quite hectic and, and, and um, I, I probably tell a lot of people something that I shouldn't have done or, or I might have misinformed them. Um, but uh, I don't think I've had any real, really big um, issues. A lot of them, a lot of them have been minor where I, I may have um, told someone something and it had been incorrect. So I passed on incorrect information. I, I, and like I say, do engineers make mistakes? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, we're all human and, and, and we all make mistakes and, some mistakes can be more costly than others, but um, generally um, engineering intuition helps. So um, the next one is from Ings Farm. Uh, who inspired you to be an engineer? What different types of jobs engineering is there at Network Rail? So um, I suppose the, the main person was my friend, uh, as I said, um, um, Carl. Uh, and I suppose my uh, my granddad as well. So my grand my granddad was a, um, a, an aircraft technician in the RAF. Uh, I was always quite inspired by what what he did uh, as well. So yeah, it, you know that's sort of who inspired me. Um, different types of jobs in engineering at work. Well, there's literally thousands of jobs at that work. Well, but specifically en engineering wise, uh, we're talking about track engineering, so that's sort of mechanical. Overhead lines, again, uh, electrical, mechanical. Um, what I do, electrical engineering, which is sort of an, an asset management role. And then we have the signaling engineers, so they're sort of electronic engineers. Uh, we have civil engineers that'll do um, drainage, um, uh, off track, um, 
maintaining the bridges and stuff like that work well have so we have lots of old bridges and stuff uh, and then obviously we have, have sort of the, the normal stuff where we'll, we'll have um, um, HR which is human relations they'll, they'll sort of um, um, they, they uh, help with people management so yeah we, we've, we've got lots and lots of, of different types uh, of people um, and, and then lots of engineering roles so we've got hundreds and hundreds of engineering roles which is which is quite exciting because obviously if you ever wanted to move you, you could always move um so the, the next one is uh from bill keys primary have you ever in, invented anything for work outside of work um not specifically invented something physically i i've probably written a, a quite a few programs and stuff uh for uh, network rail uh, using something called uh, Visual Basic application for Excel, uh, which allows you to automate some some stuff. So I, I've been involved in, in some sort of some of that sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, a good thing with with my role is I, I I can bring new technology onto the railway with with the role that I own, that I that I'm on because I own the assets. I'm I'm, I'm allowed to do that, so I, I can. Um, I can, yeah, officially bring in new stuff, but I've never specifically invented any, anything uh, per se. Uh, so the next one is, um, can you study engineering at GCSE? I'm going to tentatively say yes. Um, uh, that's, sorry, that was from Ings Farm. Um, I'm going to tentatively say yes, because I believe they are bringing it in at GCSE uh, level now. But I don't know if that's every school, so it depends on what school. I believe some of the local schools in Doncaster are doing that. Uh, so the next one is uh, from Bill Keys Primary. What sort of challenges do you come up against? What is the highest job at Network Rail and who runs it? So uh, the challenges that I, I generally face are, are assets that are broken uh, uh, or we have uh, an incident on the railway. Uh, where we have to do something. Uh, so, as, as I said, we had something called over voltage happen uh, uh, as the last weekend or the weekend prior to this, where we lost a lot of this, the signalling, uh, and that was quite a difficult situation to be in um, because obviously people want to know answers of, of what went wrong and, and what we were going to do in the future to prevent it happening again. Um, and then a lot of the other stuff is sort of um, small stuff where people um, will generally be uh, uh, asking for help as part of my role as a support engineer. That, that's what I'm meant to do is, is provide support to, to network rail on, on Eastern region uh, as an electrical engineer. So the, the highest job uh, at network rail uh, will is, is currently occupied by, by someone called Andrew Haynes. Um, now, I don't know specifically what his job title is. Uh, I don't know if he's... He's basically classed as a, a, as a CEO, effectively, as a, as for, for a private... for a non-private company. Um, uh, so he's, he, he's pretty high up. He, he's not, not really... Um, yeah, he, he's... A very hard person to get hold of, let's put it like that. So the next one is from uh, Shade Primary. What makes engineering special to go? What's special to you? What what makes engineering special to you? Um, so as, as I said, I think it's very much uh, my personality. As a child, I, I, I enjoyed uh, uh, taking things to, to bits. Uh, I, um, understanding how things work. I have very fond memories of my uh, secondary school going into a library on a wet day and and putting in a, a CD-ROM uh, into the computer uh, uh, and uh, running a program called How Things Work. Um, and in that, it, it basically, you could pick certain stuff and it'd explain how things work. And uh, for me, that, that was that was really en enjoyable uh, and I, I, I still get that now. I, I still en enjoy being able to understand how, how things work and, and, and especially when they're bringing in new technologies 
he's been able to go to the manufacturers and uh, and talk to them and uh, and understand how how that system works and what we can do and then it's getting excited about um, bringing in this new technology and seeing what it can do for, for network rail and, and how it can make our lives easier is is what makes it special and exciting to me. Have you ever been injured or seen someone else be? Uh, sorry, that was from Ings Farm. Have you ever been injured or seen someone else being injured? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Um, I've never been injured uh, on, on on the railway, uh, and I, I've I've never seen anyone else injured. Um, thank God. Um, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, things happen on the railway. Um, as recently, uh, a few months ago, we, we had a couple of fatalities where, where we um, lost, unfortunately, lost a couple of workers who, who um, got hit by a train. So it, it's very unfortunate. And, and um, yeah, ho hopefully something I'll never have to experience. So the next one is um, from... Uh, Bill Keys Primary, um, do you get paid a lot? Um, uh, yes, I would say we get rewarded quite well in network well. Um, um, I wouldn't say it's vast amounts of money, but it is um, definitely above the UK average. Uh, and we get um, additional benefit. I, so I, I, for my role as a senior asset engineer, because I'm, I'm a band three in network well, uh, and you can go all the way up to exec direct. So I'm four bands below the top, but we get a uh, private healthcare. Um, we get 28 days holiday. So yeah, we, we do. Uh, and we have the ability to flexi work. Uh, so today I'm, I'm actually working from home. I'm, I'm not in the office where obviously it'd be rather noisy trying to do this. So, Yes, Network Rail does pay quite well. Have you ever worked on a viaduct bridge tunnel? Yes, uh, uh, probably all three at some point. Uh, most recent one was in a tunnel called the Northern City Line, which is um, down in London, uh, which is uh, which runs from uh, Moorgate to Stevenage, basically the line. Uh, but the last part of the um, railway line is there's four kilometres, two four, two four kilometre tunnels, uh, and it's very dark and dusty and horrible to work in. So yes, uh, and um, viaducts maybe not worked on, but maybe walked across the bridges that I've actually done a bridge renewal when I was doing some of my placement work. So yeah. Uh, and the next part of uh, Bill's key uh, question is, do you like trains? If you do, what do you like about them? Um, it sort of comes with the territory of being working on the railway. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that I'm um, what you'd call a train spotter, but I, I know enough about rolling stock and traction types to have a good understanding. But that, I believe, allows me to do a better job uh, um, uh, in network for all being able to understand that and, and, and working on that. Um, so the next one is from uh, Shade Primary School. Do your family encourage you to go into engineering or did someone else inspire you? So yeah, like I say, um, my granddad was actually a, a, um, a, an a aircraft engineer in the RAF. So I, I sort of, get some of that from my granddad going into his garage in his workshop and, and doing stuff in there with him. Uh, uh, and like I say, I had some inspiration for, from a friend um, who, was, who was also in engineering and said, oh, you'd, you'd really enjoy this. So, yeah, I, I sort of, um, I, I get that, yeah, uh, from, from, from them. Um, so, Ings Farm, uh, <laughs> what is your salary? Um, I'd prefer not to say, but it's above it's above the UK average. Um, it, it's within a banding of thirty thousand to sixty thousand. Let, let's put it like that. So I would I would say it, it's quite a lot compared to most people. Uh, so the next one is from uh, Bill Keys Primary. Do you work overnight? Um, yes, we do sometimes. Um, 
So a lot of the, the maintenance that, that we're required to do, unfortunately, we can't do it in the daytime um, um, because uh, it, it's difficult to stop trains from running. So we tend to do it when there aren't a lot of trains running, which is generally very late at night. So we we'll normally wait until the tra last train passes, which is sort of around um, 11 o'clock at night. And then sort of we have a window from about 11 o'clock, roughly until about four or five o'clock in the morning. So yes, we, we do work overnight um, and it's very difficult to stay awake. Uh, the next part of uh, Bill Keys is, uh, is your job easy and, and what's the best part of your job? Um, is it easy? It can be and it can also be challenging at times. Um, like I, say, like I said in my presentation, every day it is different. Um, and some days it's harder than others. Uh, today it's been hard, obviously, answering all these questions and doing your presentation. Uh, yesterday was quite difficult because we had some incidents of, of trains. Uh, um, but, yeah, I, I mean, the best part of my job, I suppose, is... is being able to see the end of something. So, so I have a, a small pot of money that I that I look after in in, in, in Network Rail. So for this um, for this year, I had a million pounds, uh, and then for the next four years, I've got one and a half million pounds to spend. Um, so yeah, I, it's good to see something being done and, and feel like you're making a difference. I suppose. Uh, so the next one is from uh, Ings Farm. How many people help you with your job? Um, so I currently have two staff underneath me uh, um, working for me, uh, both classed as asset engineers. So yeah, I I uh, I will. A lot of my job uh, has changed quite recently. I, I tend to deal a lot with um, uh, financial stuff. Uh, so. I, I tend not. I tend to get less and less involved with engineering now, and I tend to give it to the two guys below me. Um, so the next one is from Bill Keys Primary. What do you hate about your job? Um, finance. <laughs> I, I I don't. I like spending the money. I just don't like managing it. So I have certain obligations that I have to report my financial standings to to Network Rail. So I have to tell them how much money I'm spending. Uh, when I'm going to spend it, uh, if and if I don't spend it, why I haven't spent it. So yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that I don't particularly like about finance, but um, yeah, that, that's probably the main thing. Is it's definitely non-engineering stuff that I that I don't like about it. So uh, the the, ne the next one's from uh, Inks Farm. Where are the different bases for network rail? So um, as I said, so for for Eastern Region, so. We, we have quite a lot. So um, big big engineering centres are, are um, York, Leeds, uh, Peterborough uh, and London. So that's where you're going to get lots of engineering people. And then our, our maintenance departments, uh, 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 sort of, uh, other big engineering departments will be as well, um, Stratford, uh, Tottenham, Colchester, Derby, I think that's it. So the maintenance is based, as you'd expect, quite all over. So for, for my, the, the, the guys that I look after specifically, uh, the, the maintenance um, departments are, um, so we have Newcastle, Leeds, York, Doncaster, Sheffield, Lincoln, uh, Peterborough, Hitchin, King's Cross. So they're they're all the maintenance uh, departments that I that I help look after. Uh, and then on, on some of the other parts, we will have Bedford, uh, Derby, uh, Tottenham, uh, some other ones as well. Uh, obviously, that just encompasses the eastern region. So each other region will have uh, various engineering bases uh, and various uh, maintenance department basing so yeah we're, we're very um, we're across the country there's always somewhere closer than you think uh so the next one is from uh bill key primary is your job sociable uh, very much so um i we have a very good work-life balance in network rail i will very rarely do more than my uh, allocated 35 hours a week um so uh, and my 
my normal working week is Monday to Friday. I don't have to work weekends. I don't have to work nights, but on the other occasion, I will work nights and I will work weekends. So generally, myself and, and my team are very sociable. We have normal working hours and we are quite lucky with that because, as I say, the maintenance can be out weekends and, and nights and every other hour. So the next one's from uh, Ings Farm. How many problems have you solved in your career? I've got no idea. Uh, hundreds, I, I, I guess. Hundreds into thousands. Um, it, it depends on, on what we're classing as a problem. Um, I, I don't think everything that, that comes across my desk isn't always a problem. As I say, I think people think they're problems, but they're not actually problems. There's, there's bigger problems in, in network rather than, than, than some of the other stuff. Uh, um, but a lot of this, the stuff we tend to deal with is what I would say queries rather than problems. Uh, so someone will be asking for information or, or where they can find something or, or who, who can they talk to uh, um, and stuff. So, so the, the next one is um, Shade Primary School. Uh, 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 it's how does Network Rail try to use green energy and clean power? So yeah, obviously there's there's a big drive drive at the minute to to um, go to uh, greener energies. Uh, obviously, try and reduce our carbon footprint uh, and, and everything else. So we're one of the things we are looking at doing is trying to reduce our carbon footprint. Is is getting rid of diesel trains. So we have a lot of diesel trains running. We're trying to change them to electric. So obviously, I'll get rid of some of it. Um, but specifically using green energy, we, we have various things happening in Network Rail where we'll, where we'll end up using solar panels. So uh, one of the more recent ones I can think of is uh, we've, we've implemented some welfare facilities uh, called Solar Loos. So they will use a solar panel to panel the electrics inside the toilets uh, out on site. Uh, a lot of the new buildings that we build will come with uh, uh, solar panels uh, 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 and stuff to try and power that building instead of more relying on, on heavily on the, on, on the carbon uh, energy sources. Um, so yeah, uh, and we will utilise um, as many green initiatives as, as possible uh, and as well as that we're doing some of the smaller stuff is changing the light bulbs to, to LEDs uh, and you'll be surprised at how many bulbs we actually have. So going back to what we were talking about, me working in a tunnel where it was dark and, and dusty, as part of what I'm doing in there is actually changing all the lighting to LED lights uh, to become more energy efficient, thus saving power and, and obviously network rail trying to become, become more greener as a whole. Um, so uh, the next one, and I believe the last one, is from uh, Ings Farm. Did you ever doubt being a, an engineer? Uh, did you have anything to do with the child tunnel? Uh, and what's your budget per year? So uh, I, being doubting yourself as an engineer. Um, yes, I, I would suggest that probably happens when you change job roles more than anything else. I think there's always that. Um, a bit of uncertainty when when you when you um, change job roles, uh, you probably sit there. I, I had this feeling you sort of sit there and think, "Oh, uh, is this really right for me? Am I going to be able to do this job?" Uh, but then I think as, as you get on and progress, it, you sort of lose that and, and become more confident. And yeah, I, I don't. I haven't had major doubts, and more of them have been. Um, when I've changed job roles and stuff like that, I've, I've found it um, very difficult. Um, did I have anything to do with the child tunnel? Unfortunately not, that was a bit before my time. Um, I, I know people that have worked on it, um, but not, I haven't had anything directly to do with it. Um, so unfortunately not. Um, what's your budget per year? So um, as I said, I so I actually, have a couple of, uh, of uh, pots of money that I, that I manage. So Network Rail work in a, a strange thing called a control period. Now control periods last five years. So we are now in control period six. Uh, uh, and yeah, uh, for this control period, my what we call minor works money, I've 
being allocated £7 million. Now, that is relatively small uh, compared to some of the, the stuff. Uh, so we, as, a, as an EMP team, we were given uh, £161 million. So as you can tell, £7 million of £161 isn't, isn't a vast amount of, uh, of money. I have various other smaller pots, but none of them uh, are as big as my mining works pot. Um, so yeah, the, the £161 million is um, us to be, enable us to do a, a lot of renewal work on, on the railway uh, and renew a lot of the old stuff. Because um, a lot of the stuff that we've got on the railway now is is nearly 40 years old and, and requires replacing because a lot of this stuff's um, uh, been on for a long time. Uh, and that's the end of uh, all the questions. So has anyone got any other ones before? I think we have to close soon, do we, Chris? Yeah, we've got we kind of a few minutes, but so if anyone's got any questions. Um, but if, I mean, I, I noticed one of the schools um, has dropped out, but if anyone has any of the questions, now's the time to ask. Um, otherwise, we'll, we'll, we'll close this meeting. Some great questions there, um, Jamie, and, and that, I admit it's some great answers as well. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, Shed. Thank you. Right, so Ings Farm, are you okay? Because um, let's see how we go. They're thinking about it. Things farm, are you happy for us to close down the meeting? Thank you. Thanks, it's wonderful. Okay, well, well, thank you all for um, participating. Huge thanks to Jamie. Um, um, great presentation, great questions, great um, answers as well. Um, so thank you all, and you know, please feel free to join in any of these um, online presentations. As they, as of when they happen. So I'm going to close the meeting now. And thank you all. I'll, I'll drop you an email as soon as I can, Jamie. And um, right, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Bye. Bye, everybody.